there's a spacecraft that could help NASA finally return to the moon. But it's probably not the one NASA has spent nearly 20 years and tens of billions of dollars building. The Orion spacecraft was supposed to be everything NASA needed, affordable quick to develop, and together with the SLS rocket, capable of sending astronauts to the moon in a single launch. Instead, it became one of the agency's biggest headaches, plagued by delays, soaring costs, and growing doubts about whether it can even do the job. What was meant to be NASA's next great spaceship has turned into a burden on the Artemis program, a symbol of the old way of doing things. But here's the interesting thing. Orion's failure may have accidentally revealed a better option, a spacecraft that already meets NASA's own requirements for deep space travel. And the best part, even with tons of upgrades, SpaceX's Dragon remains a perfect fit for NASA's Artemis. This is the story of how SpaceX's Crew Dragon is solving what NASA's Orion couldn't. Welcome to TechMap. You could say it all really started back in 2006 during the George W. Bush years. That's when Orion first came to life, not as part of Artemis, but as something called the Crew Exploration Vehicle under NASA's Constellation program. The plan back then was ambitious Orion would ride into space on the massive Ares 5 rocket, kind of an early version of today's SLS, and link up with the Altair lunar lander for a return to the moon. But things didn't go quite as planned. Constellation was cancelled in 2010, and yet somehow Orion survived. Why? Well, think of it this way, if you've already spent years building an elaborate Lego spaceship, would you really toss it out and start over? Probably not. You just keep adding cooler pieces until it's ready for the big leagues. That's basically what NASA did. Instead of shelving Orion, they reworked it to fit new rockets and new goals, namely the Artemis program, which is all about sending astronauts back to the lunar surface. It was a practical move too. By sticking with hardware that was already tested and reliable, NASA could keep costs down and speed things up. But the agency didn't just stop there, they also knew how to sell it. In NASA's words, Orion riding atop the SLS would be the ultimate combo, the next Apollo ready to carry astronauts to the moon and beyond. Officially, it's called the Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, designed to ferry humans everywhere from the lunar gateway to lunar landers. And then there's the SLS itself. NASA likes to call it the most powerful rocket ever built, the only one capable of sending Orion its crew and all their cargo directly to the moon in a single launch. So from NASA's perspective, it's the perfect match, a proven spacecraft and a powerhouse rocket built to recapture some of that old Apollo glory and maybe just maybe help the US win the space race all over again. But here's where things take a turn and not in a good way. What started as NASA's next great moon program has quietly become one of the agency's meaningless promises. Remember when NASA said it would have astronauts back on the moon by 2020? Well, it's now 2025. Still no astronauts in Orion. Still no moon landings. And that whole low-cost, fast-to-build promise. Yeah, that aged about as well as milk in the sun. The Orion program alone has already burned through more than 30 billion dollars. It's been in development for 19 years. To put that number into perspective, 30 billion dollars is many times what it costs SpaceX to build Crew Dragon. It's about the same as building two international space stations. Or if you prefer something a little more entertaining, imagine putting 10,000 Teslas into orbit, just cruising around Earth in the world's most expensive car parade. And on a completely unrelated but funny note, that's also enough money for Elon Musk to buy Twitter again. When you combine Orion with the space launch system, the total cost climbs to nearly $100 billion and counting. So why so expensive? Well, part of the problem is Orion's weight. The spacecraft is heavy, which means every launch costs more around $200 per kilogram. That's not a typo. 200 ton, thousand dollars per kilogram. 
It's no wonder NASA has to scrutinize every bolt and bracket before liftoff. Take the launch abort system, for example. It's a vital safety feature, but it also weighs seven tons about as much as the entire Russian Soyuz spacecraft. By comparison, SpaceX's Crew Dragon tips the scales at just 12.5 tons total, making it roughly two and a half times lighter than Orion. And the cost overruns aren't the only issue. Orion's development under Lockheed Martin has been painfully slow, dragged down by a cost-plus contract that rewards spending over speed. Meanwhile, SpaceX built and launched Crew Dragon in just six years, about one-third of Orion's timeline under a fixed-price contract. Crew Dragon isn't just faster to develop, it's also flying real missions. Its heat shield made from SpaceX's advanced Pika-X material has proven itself time and time again. Orion, on the other hand, took a step back in time. Its heat shield uses Avcoat, a material originally designed for the Apollo capsules in the 1960s, and even with updates, it didn't perform as expected. During the Artemis I mission in 2022, Orion's heat shield showed signs of unexpected char loss and more than 100 chipped areas, some with deeper damage than predicted. The fixes did NASA and Lockheed Martin make fixes afterward. Ironically, they introduced new problems instead of solving old ones. At this point, you might be wondering, couldn't Lockheed Martin have just used Pika heat shield material that worked so well on other missions? The answer is yes, and that's what makes this even more puzzling. Lockheed Martin already built a Pika heat shield for NASA's Mars rovers Curiosity and Perseverance, and both of those handled fiery Martian entries without a hitch. But for some reason when it came to Orion, the capsule meant to carry human lives. They went with Avcoat, an older and less capable design. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Crew Dragon keeps doing its job like a reliable worker bee launching astronauts to the ISS and bringing them home safely. Orion, on the other hand, keeps running into technical problems. Tests have revealed unexpected erosion on the bolts that connect Orion to its European service module. Even the side hatch the door astronauts use before launch and after landing turned out to be a hassle. Why? Because it doesn't have a pressure equalization valve, meaning it can be nearly impossible to open when there's a pressure difference between the inside and outside of the capsule. By now you might be thinking, is there any truth to what NASA has been saying about Orion and the SLS based on what's actually happening with Artemis? That's a tough case to make. NASA claims that the SLS and Orion together can send astronauts straight to the moon in a single launch. On paper that sounds great. The bigger and more powerful the rocket, the easier it should be to send a lightweight spacecraft farther. That's Rocket Science 101. But in practice, that's not what's happening. The SLS Block 1, the current version of the rocket, can carry about 27 metric tons to lunar orbit. Sounds like a lot, until you remember that Orion, including its launch abort system, weighs over 33 metric tons. That's heavier than what the rocket was really designed to handle. As a result, the SLS has to operate right at the edge of its limits. Sure, some might say, didn't NASA already prove it works? Artemis 1 launched successfully, didn't it? Yes, it did. But that mission pushed the system close to its maximum capability. It worked, but there wasn't much room for error. NASA knows this, too. That's why future Artemis missions starting after Artemis 3 will rely on upgraded versions of the rocket Block 1B and eventually Block 2 with more powerful boosters and improved upper stages. These versions are supposed to carry heavier payloads and larger crews farther into space. But here's the real question. If the current program is already drowning in cost overruns and delays, what's going to happen when NASA starts building bigger rockets? Will history repeat itself? And if Orion is already showing cracks in performance cost and design, what if there's already a better alternative waiting in the wings? That's where SpaceX Crew Dragon comes in. Even with upgrades for deep space missions, Dragon would still come in far lighter than NASA's Orion, a perfect example of how far spacecraft design has evolved. 
Orion's blueprint dates back to Apollo era, thinking big heavy, and built with layers of complexity. Dragon, on the other hand, represents a new era of engineering. It uses fewer parts, is reusable, uses advanced materials, and has streamlined systems integration. The result, a spacecraft that's lighter, cheaper, and faster to build and fly. Now, to be fair, Orion was designed for longer lunar missions. It carries robust life support systems and extra radiation shielding features that make sense for deep space, but also add tons of weight. Dragon, in contrast, was optimized for short trips to the ISS in low Earth orbit. But here's the interesting part. SpaceX has worked on variants of Dragon that could go farther under NASA's own contracts. That alone shows NASA knows SpaceX has the potential to develop a deep space crew vehicle, one that's lighter, more efficient, and far less expensive than Orion. And if anyone's going to pull it off, it's probably SpaceX. This is the company that decided to catch rockets out of the sky with a pair of giant robotic chopsticks and actually made progress doing it. The company that's aiming for fully reusable rockets, the kind that take off and land like airplanes, is completely rewriting the rules of rocketry. These are things that even NASA's most seasoned engineers once considered impossible. But SpaceX is already turning them into reality. If that future comes true, one possible scenario looks like this astronauts could ride Crew Dragon from Earth to low orbit, then transfer to the HLS for the trip down to the Moon's surface. NASA could even open bids to adapt Dragon or Boeing's Starliner with better propulsion and life support for deep space missions. And let's be honest, Crew Dragon would probably win. It's cheaper proven and has flown far more astronauts than Orion ever has. Supporters of NASA's existing programs, like Orion and the SLS, both led by Boeing and Lockheed Martin, have their own counter-arguments. They point out that SLS works and Orion works. In fact, Orion has already flown around the moon and safely returned to Earth. The spacecraft isn't an early test article or a pre-prototype, as some critics claim. It's a fully functional vehicle. The version that flew on Artemis 1 was nearly identical to the crewed model, with one key exception. The life support system wasn't installed, simply because it wasn't needed for that mission. So what about you, Orion or Dragon? Which one do you think will really take NASA back to the moon? Let me know down in the comments below.